So this is what I would call bendy board, shop made bendy board. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to make wood bend. Uh, most people are familiar with steam bending. Uh, there's also bent laminations where you take very thin pieces of almost veneers and you bend them around forms and you glue them and they'll hold tight to whatever form you bend them around once the glue sets. You've seen me do that many times on my channel, but I've never done anything like this. Basically, you've got three layers of wood here. And the reason we're making these is we're, we're doing a ellipse, dining, ellipse conference table, which is right behind me. I don't wanna show you too much of this because there's gonna be a full build video on this table, but uh, it's a veneer table. So it's got an edge here that's got a plywood edge. And I wanna do something cool to band that edge and make it look nice. And this is what I came up with. This is something a little different. I said, this is a, a really attempt number one at making these and we failed. This, these aren't gonna work. These aren't gonna make the cut. And I'm gonna share with you why here in a second. So we got three pieces of pecan here. You can see the two outside pieces in that core piece. And it is a fairly flexible material here. Uh, the grain on the outside pieces is running in this direction and then the grain on the inside is running opposite. Originally what I had thought I would do is just make a thin layer like this, just this one layer, and I think it would be pliable enough with the way the grain's running that you could bend it, but it just breaks. This is super fragile. This is only a sixteenth of an inch thick. So any, any bending you do without the core, the whole thing just breaks. Now, if you put the core in there, it adds quite a bit of strength to it, and it's still rigid. Now, before I explain to you how this particular batch failed on me, let's jump in real quick, and I wanna show you how these are made. Uh, what the process looks like and then i'll show you kind of where we're failing you can kind of see whoa nice catch there you can kind of see that popping up uh that veneer is coming undone didn't get a good glue bond so let's jump in real quick i want to show you the footage of how we made this Canadians do it. Yeah, uh, even like the people in like North Dakota. Yeah, oh yeah. It's, get this, like, and it's windy. Snow. Yeah. That's just, that's just I feel like that would have been like a sign. Okay. Humans aren't going to live here. Let's go somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> this is not a good place for humans.
Okay, so a few things that went wrong in that process right there. First off is I tried to do too much at once. This is the one of the one of the original bandings we did, and you can tell. I mean, I've got pieces kind of breaking off. It didn't get glued down well. Um, one thing I was having a hard time with is you can see we put each one of those little pieces together, we taped it, and then we folded it up and ran a bead in there. I was having a hard time getting glue down in there. And I was noticing it as I was doing it, but I, I kind of didn't think it was going to be a big deal. And I think it caused us some issues. On top of that is we did that edge band, edge gluing, and then we put the three layers together all in one shot. And with tight bond, um, you know, it sets up fairly quick, especially when the shop's heated and it's winter and it's dry, the humidity's low, uh, this glue starts to tack off pretty quick. So by the time we had everything together, taped up and going into the bag, I think the glue was just already starting to dry out a little bit. On top of that, the bag gave us some issues. We couldn't get it to seal, so it took a little bit longer than normal to get that suction to start. So that was working against us right there, and I think honestly that was one of the big problems. And when you pull it out, you look in the edge of this, there's three, so you can see voids where it didn't get pressed well. And I think one of the reasons for that is I put a cover sheet over all four pieces, and I don't think that distributes the load very well in the bag. I think the best thing you can do in the bag is put a cover sheet over each individual piece and spread them apart and allow that bag to suck completely over both sides of the part and really pull down on it pretty pretty good. So moving forward, what I'm gonna do is, you know, do it in a two-step glue up. We'll edge glue everything together. So what I did the second run is I just went and glued each piece, each piece individually. I put a bead of glue, stuck it together, and just worked 24 of them over. And then I stretched a piece of tape over it and just let those sit overnight and let that glue set up and really hold everything together. And then the next morning we were able to come in and run those through the wide belt sander. And that's where we're gonna jump in right now. We'll get those sanded and get it back in the bag. Okay, so we got the cores made right here. I chose hickory for these. I had a really nice piece of hickory back there, and hickory has a really good ability to bend and not break. Um, so this is gonna be a great core material. I sanded these down, I started off at about an eighth. I wanted to keep them as thick as possible and ended up going to a heavy 16th. Uh, the next step here is to get them in the bag, and instead of using a full cover sheet like we did on the last run yesterday, make an individual cover sheet for each 
each strip and then uh, we'll space them out so that the bag can get sucked down around them and I think that'll help get a little bit more pressure on them. Twisted? No. Nope. Okay. This go around, it worked much better than the first. Everything's glued up much better. We've got better seams, no gaps. Um, nothing is breaking as we bend it. So I'm pumped that we got that figured out. And also we got it all in kind of a test run here on the table and it worked great. So really couldn't be happier with how this is coming together. You can see it right here. So we've got a little backer board, a ratchet strap is what's pulling it. And then the actual uh, banding is right in here. If I can get that in focus. And it is really seaming up really well. We don't see any gaps. A few areas where we had some gaps, we just take a little wedge and hammer it in there and kind of pushes things together. So we know the system's going to work. Uh, I think now what we got to do is kind of organize the bandings, figure out where we want to go, and then we can glue them on. Okay, well, one thing I want to show you before we shut this video down to give you a comparison. This is the original banding, the one that we remade. I'm going to, this is drop off. So when we ripped it on the table saw, 
this is what came off and it kind of gives you an idea of the issues like see that's popping that's popping it just it wasn't glued down well so as you bend it it breaks loose this is drop off from the newer more improved glue up and you'll hear the the cracking but what you're hearing is the wood grain there's no delamination everything is still together you're just hearing little splits it's, it's actually pretty cool little splits happening but that's a tight tight radius there much tighter than we even need and I mean I'll keep going until it breaks Still bending. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's just splitting the wood and starting to break apart there. I don't know if you can see that. But I mean, I'm bent all the way over like that. That's pretty cool. Let's just go till we break it. What the heck? Go, go, go. But nothing's coming unglued, so that's the difference. And boom. It actually split the core piece. So nothing came unglued. It split the wood in the core, which is wild. That's cool. It's interesting. It didn't break it. It just split it right down the middle. Do that again. Same thing. Wow. So when it fails, the core is failing. Nothing is breaking on the outside because it's glued together so well. Oh, the things you learn. That was fun. Okay, so I thought that was really cool. I really wanted to share it with you guys. It's, this is a really interesting, awesome deal. We actually have the tabletop here done, ready for finish. The edge banding's all glued on, cleaned up, and it looks it looks really, really cool. I don't want to share it with you, though, because um, I got a full build video coming on this whole table, hopefully going live next week. I've already started editing it. Sorry to make you wait, but uh, I did want to share this little bit of knowledge that I picked up here on bending. So I, 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 don't, I haven't seen a whole lot of people share this particular method for bending. I haven't seen a whole lot of people do it. I'm sure it's been done. I'm not going to take claim for being the origin originator of it. I'm sure it's happened. Obviously, you can buy uh, four by eight bendy board sheets, the exact same concept. You can get it commercially. I buy it. I use it all the time. We use it on this table build, uh, but I've never shot made it. So. If you need a bendable banding of some kind, this is a great application to do that. I hope you learned something. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Before we leave, I want to show you a few things that you probably won't get to see that we're working on that you saw in this video you might be curious about. First of which is uh, what looks like a giant cannon, and it is. If you've been with my channel for a while, you know I've done quite a bit of work for the Alamo here in San Antonio. And this is another project for the Alamo. This is actually long long-standing project that I'm still trying to finish up. This is a three-pound cannon pattern that'll go to a foundry and get casted. Uh, we're Right now, we've got the trunnions done. The trunnions are what will mount the cannon on a carriage, and they go right in. Oh, I can't turn it. It's so tight. Ugh. They go right in these holes that we've bored out on our drill press, and those become the trunnions of the cannon. And then there's a cascabel, so it's a decorative piece that hangs off the back about four or five inches. I still got to turn that and glue it on. And this one is done. This one was, I'm not quite as proud. I've, I've done several of these patterns for the Alamo and this one was one that got away from me. I had a little issue on this ring here. I cut it down too low. So I had to build it back up at a filler and reshape it. And then I, I have a pattern that I go off of and I started my taper way too, way too steep here. And I burned into the actual, what should be the cannon. And I had to fill all that with filler as well and come back and redo it. Not exactly um, super proud of that, but it's, it is a cannon pattern. It's being used to make a sand mold. It's not, it's not, it's okay. As long as they can make a mold out of it, it'll work just fine. This table I want to share as well. This probably won't get a build video. I wanted to do a build video. I might do a section on a specific part of it, but uh, Rob's been working on this and he's done a great job. He cut all the joinery the interior guts of this. So we've got these two, uh, dove, these two four rails right here that are dovetailed into the apron. And what's going to happen with this, and this is what I think I'll shoot the video on, is we're going to cut out a two inch section out of here. And this is actually a drop leaf table. So uh, you've got your main section of table, then you've got a drop leaf coming down right here that folds up. 
And within each one of these little slots here, we have a pull-out support that holds that leaf. And so that's kind of where Rob's at with this. He has made the bottom runner supports. Those will glue up inside there, and that's what that um, little pull-out will slide on. So this is a cool project. I think it's worthy. It's more traditional furniture. I love, we love building this kind of furniture. It's a little different than the more contemporary stuff that uses more plywoods and stuff like that. But I do think it'd be cool to feature how this, all this works. And we have been filming sections of it. So I should be able to share a little bit of this one with you. And that is it, my friends. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little section of bending. I think, I thought that was a lot of fun. I learned a lot on that. And I'm happy to share it with you guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Stay tuned. Hopefully next week the full build video of this conference table will be live. And you guys, will, I think you'll really enjoy that one. So hang tight. It'll be here soon.